Samuel L. Jackson in a serial killer police procedural. Let's talk about Damaged. Hey everyone, it's David Stark from Watcher Pass. I'm here to talk to you about Damage, which is coming to theaters digital and on demand on April 12th, 2024. It is a new Samuel L. Jackson starring police procedural that has serial killers, a nice kind of setting, and some dark content. My hot take is I think you should watch it later. I actually like this a lot more than I expected to. I enjoyed a lot of things about it. I liked the setting. I liked the cast. I did like the overall content and practical effects, but I didn't really love like, some of the things were visually hard to see. Maybe that was just my setup, but I couldn't see some of the things on the screen uh, there. And there were some like issues with the turn and the ending, but overall, look, I liked this a lot more than I expected to. I actually really enjoyed it. So I think you should check it out. Just maybe check it out at the comfort of your own home. Wait for it to come to streaming or on demand. So all that being said, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the film, a few things I like, a few things I didn't like, and then really quickly go into the ending. So as you can imagine, there'll be spoilers in the ending section. If you don't want to know what happens in this movie, and you might not, there are some surprises in that turn that I talked about. And I would turn it off when I get to the ending section. Before that, though, I'll keep it vague. I'll keep it spoiler free. And I'll let you know when I get to those spoilers. So. In Damage, you have Samuel L. Jackson playing Dan Lawson. He is a detective from Chicago who is brought in to Scotland because some murders start happening that are fairly shocking and similar to a case that he investigated years ago. A serial killer, a ritualistic serial killer, seems to be back in Scotland. And so uh, Dan Lawson comes in to help investigate. But as they investigate more... The, they try to narrow down suspects. Is he going to finally be able to solve this case that has been haunting him for years? You have to watch the movie to find out. So, things I liked about this movie. The first, look, I love the cast. Look, you've got Samuel L. Jackson. You've got Vincent Cassell. Uh, Gianni Capaldi does a good job as Detective Boyd. And Katie Dickey was in it, too, from Game of Thrones fame. I liked the cast. It was a good overall cast. And Samuel L. Jackson does a lot more in this movie than you expect from, like, a big name star you know sometimes they'll have independent movies where they'll get a big star in there and they'll have like one or two lines no samuel jackson is like in it through and through he is definitely the main character in this film and i like seeing that i like seeing him kind of like be this gruff chicago detective in this uh in scotland the second thing i loved i love the effects it has really good practical effects you got a police procedural you've got a serial killer movie you want good practical effects and this has it there are body parts there is gore there is uh, you know, some grisly scenes and it all really looks good and helps you kind of like get in the mood of this movie. And the last thing I love, I love the content. It has some really dark content. It is a true crime police procedural about a serial killer. You're going to have some dark things. There are some, uh, you know, cult aspects in here. There are some uh, seedier things in this movie and it is fun to see. And if you're into that, you will enjoy it. So all that being said, things I didn't love as much as about this movie. These are mostly minor-ish. The first, this was weird. It is a really dark movie, like both in terms of content, but also in terms of like the film itself. It is very dark. And sometimes it is tough to see what is going on. It might have just been my setup. Maybe that'll be different in like a later version of the film. But for me, there were a few things that were tough to see and it made it kind of tough to follow certain scenes. The second thing I didn't really love as much, there is, a, you know, I guess a poor turn. It has a turn. It has a pretty surprising turn. I didn't think it was handled very well. It kind of came out of nowhere. And so it felt like it was supposed to be a shock turn and it was, but it didn't really feel earned. And the last thing I didn't love as much, it has a little bit of a disappointment and not a bad ending. It's not bad, but I don't know. It's just not as good as I think it could have been. I think it could have, they could have had the ending tweaked it just a little bit and it might've been a little bit more enjoyable, a little bit more believable, as believable as a movie like this could be. But uh, I do think that the ending could have been just a little bit better. So overall, look, I enjoyed this film. I thought it was a, a fun movie. I thought it was an enjoyable police procedural. I liked having Samuel L. Jackson as a main character and his interaction with Gianni Capaldi throughout and with Vincent Cassel, one of the old detectives who had been on the force in Chicago and is now living in Scotland. They were all really fun to see. So that is Damage. It's coming to theaters, digital and on demand on April 12, 2024. I think you should watch it later. Wait for it to come to streaming or, you know, check it out on demand in the comfort of your own home. But if you do see it, let me know what you thought. Let me know what you liked and didn't like. I would love to hear it. And I'm going to go into the ending right now, so if you don't want to know what happens in this movie, turn it off now because there will be spoilers. So, Damage takes place in Scotland, specifically Edinburgh, and this serial killer, you know, who had been active in Chicago, went dormant, seems to be coming back. Someone's house gets broken in, they get attacked, and their body is arranged like this serial killer did. The serial killer would, like, cut off their legs, arrange their arms in, like, a cross. There were usually you know, some sort of uh, religious symbols in the room. It was an interesting arrangement. And when this happens, it like pings, uh, you know, the desk of Detective Dan Lawson in Chicago. 
He comes out to uh, Scotland to help out, and he is paired up with Chief Inspector Boyd to help solve this case. And as they dig in, they start to get into some of these suspects. There is one suspect who is pretty creepy, Connor McGregor, who uh, seems to have a connection with this first victim and the second victim that happens a little bit later. And also just gives you the general creeps. He is part of this like religious sect, or at least he was. They suspected this religious sect because of all the religious imagery. But he got kicked out recently, so they think maybe it's a rage thing, maybe it's something else. They key in on Conor McGregor. Now, they also start inspecting some of the crime scenes again and notice certain things. In one, there was like this, I think the victim was Jewish, and there was a Jewish book that was turned upside down. And in there, there was another clue. It was a, a bookmark in some Bible verse, it seems. Another, I think there was a, a religious symbol that was drawn on the, the wall. So there is, th this seems to be the same MO of that serial killer. Now... Chief Inspector Boyd and his wife have been having trouble recently. They lost their son a little bit ago, and that kind of hurt their relationship. Uh, Chief Inspector Boyd dug into his work. He couldn't really deal with it, and it's, his relationship with his wife suffered. Now, they were starting to make up. It felt like they were starting to get better. And this culminates in a lovely like group dinner between uh, Detective Lawson, Chief Inspector Boyd, his wife, and this person named Bravo, who is uh, an inspector in Chicago that worked with Lawson on the case. And... He helped out on the serial killer case, and then he moved to Scotland. And you're like, instantly, like, okay, Bravo must be the killer. He was in Chicago when it was happening. They didn't solve it. Interesting. And now he's in Scotland, and it's rehappening. Clearly, he's the killer. And Vincent Cassell does a good job of, like, being charming, but also having something else going on. So you get the sense that, that he is probably the killer. Now, after this dinner, after they are inspecting the case, after the cops are really trying to zero in on Conor McGregor, some more tragedy strikes. And Inspector Boyd's wife becomes the victim. And this, again, you think like, okay, it must be Bravo because they had just had dinner. He and the wife, I think her, I think her character's name was Marie, were talking and they seem to be getting pretty close. And it seems like maybe Bravo keyed in on her and now wants to like kill her as well. You don't know, but you do know that Inspector Boyd comes home and finds her. And this was an interesting scene because like it was a good tense scene, but... Boyd is like going around his house. He's calling for his wife. You can't see anything. And he doesn't try any lights. I'm like, dude, turn on lights. He just has his little flashlight trying to go through when he thinks there might be something going on. And maybe there's like a killer in his house. Turn on all the lights. Get all the visibility. But he doesn't. He is like looking around in this in his, with his flashlight. He calls her phone. He like hears it upstairs. I think he goes into like maybe an attic or something. Some room that doesn't seem to have any light. And in there, he's looking around and he sees... uh blood and he sees his wife after boyd's wife dies bravo becomes very interested in the case and he's trying to talk to uh boyd and get information he's like i can help i just need to know everything again makes him seem like the suspect i liked this it kind of like built it up like he was probably the suspect now boyd is very vested in this case he is actually taken off because he's too close to it because his wife was killed but he continues to investigate he goes back to abigail's place one of the earlier victims and finds a key and he thinks, okay, let me see if this key fits in a shed that McGregor has. Very convenient, but he goes anyways, he goes in, unlocks the, the shed, goes inside, and I'm like, dude, like, what are you doing? You're off the case. This is going to break any sort of chain of custody. Like, this is not a good thing, but he just wants to solve the case. He wants to get this person off the streets. And when he goes inside, he finds a lot of, like, tools, implements that you could use if you were a serial killer, but he also finds McGregor dead and cut up. So it seems like McGregor was probably not the uh, the killer. It seems like someone else was the killer. Probably Bravo. You don't know. And now we get some more information about this investigation. It turns out that Lawson realized that the first murders were copies of the U.S. murders, but they weren't the same. They were you know, there was like someone heard about the murders, and we also learned earlier when McGregor was being questioned that he did hear about these murders from some from some cop who came from the U.S., was drunk in a bar, and started talking about this case. And so McGregor heard about these murders, and it seems like what McGregor did was he stored that information away, and because he was part of this, like, religious sect, he was very against other religious people. And so he keyed in on these two women, didn't like them, because I think they were different religions. One was Jewish, I forget what the other one was. And he went and murdered them because he hated their religion. He then cut them up and displayed them like the killer that he had heard about uh, in order to kind of like throw the case off, make it think, seem like the serial killer was alive back here. So McGregor did kill the first two women. 
but he didn't kill Marie. I guess those two women were like carbon copies, but it wasn't the same exact MO as the original killer. Lawson realizes that uh, Marie's killing was different. And again, this points back to like Bravo, maybe Bravo did it. And then McGregor was also killed, presumably by the serial killer. So it wasn't McGregor as the original killer. He did kill two people. He was bad. Now he's gone. But he wasn't the original serial killer. Now, Lawson then calls Bravo and says, hey, McGregor's been murdered. And Bravo has like no reaction. And he and Lawson then says, can you meet? Bravo comes to his place. It is a tense moment because you're like, Bravo's probably the killer. Lawson is talking to him. And then when Bravo's looking around Lawson's room, he finds this little like Altoid tin that has a bunch of jewelry in it. And Lawson asks, like, do you remember these? And he's like, the missing pieces. He's like, how did you get these? And then Lawson says, you gave it to her. Because one of the people that was murdered was uh, Lawson's wife. And it seems like there was a necklace that Bravo gave to Lawson's wife when they were having an affair. And so you get some new backstory here. Bravo and Lawson's wife had an affair. And Lawson found out about this, was, was very upset about this. And so he murdered people that were associated with the affair. I think he murdered like the person who sold the jewelry, someone who like rented the place where they met up, things like that. There were five people, including his wife, that were murdered by this serial killer who was Lawson. So after this realization, after Bravo realized that Lawson was the actual killer and Lawson was the one that probably killed uh, Marie and McGregor also, they fight, they you know have a confrontation in the hotel room, Bravo gets shot. And after Bravo gets shot, uh, Boyd ends up showing up at the hotel room. Lawson is like, yo, he's the killer. He's the killer. Shoot him. Shoot him. Which is a little weird because Bravo's already down. Uh, Boyd doesn't do anything. Doesn't really react. He goes to see Bravo and Bravo says some last words, something about a necklace. And he was in love. Something like that. Basically thinking about the affair and the necklace that he gave her. And then Bravo dies. During this, Lawson just kind of bounces, which again is suspicious. You would think that Lawson would really quickly be able to be like, just stay, say that Bravo was the killer. It really kind of solves itself. And then like his DNA is on all that jewelry because he touched it. So I don't know, like it seems like it's a pretty easy way to cover it up. Lawson doesn't do this. He, for some reason, just bounces, which doesn't seem smart. Now, when Boyd is there, he, and this is what I didn't love. This is the ending thing I didn't love. I think it would have been really nice. Well, not nice, but it would have been more believable if Lawson just sold it. Just said, look, Bravo was the killer. He was in America and then he came here. His DNA is on all this, you know, all this jewelry. He's connected to everyone, something like that. But Lawson doesn't do that. He just leaves and Boyd starts looking around the room. And when he's looking around the room, he sees the pieces of jewelry and he picks them up. And I was like, dude, you are an officer. You're going to get DNA all over. You're going to mess up this case. But he picks up all the jewelry, realizes what it is. And that's when he comes to the realization that Lawson must be the killer. And then he starts looking through Lawson's stuff and finds like a bunch of passports. So it seems like Lawson has some other identities, things like that. And so he realizes, all right, Lawson's a killer. He just left and they he has to get him. So then they go into a car chase. So they have a quick car chase scene. Uh, Boyd's BMW crashes. Apparently there's no airbags in this BMW because Boyd hits his head on the steering wheel. He's a little bit concussed. And they have a shootout in a like a like a forest. And this is when Lawson kind of comes to his new realization of why he killed Marie. Uh, he said that he set Boyd free, that there was no coming back from what she did, which I think is Marie. I think Marie did have an affair when Boyd was like working intensely after uh, the death of their kid. And so Lawson says like, you know, now Boyd is free. Now he has a purpose and a reason to live. His purpose is to hunt down Lawson. Again, weak justification for this. It works, but I think it could have been better. Anyways. That is when Lawson sneaks up behind Boyd, puts a gun to him, tells him to give him his gun and his phone. Uh, Lawson shoots the phone and he says, I have to go now, Glenn, but I'll be in touch. And Glenn says, today you run, tomorrow I hunt. And Lawson says, I wouldn't expect anything less. I'll be on, I'll be on the lookout for you. And then Lawson disappears. Boyd is left in the forest without a phone and apparently has to move on. This could have been the end, but they have another scene as well. You're now in Dublin, Ireland. So before you were in Edinburgh, Scotland, now you're in Dublin, Ireland. Boyd is kind of leading this task force to catch this killer, Lawson. They get some intel that he is coming on this ferry. So they have a big setup to catch him. They set up a sting. They find someone that kind of looks like Lawson, but doesn't really. They move in. It's not him. 
Lawson seems to have slipped them this this time. And the movie ends with Lawson in front of his car, drinking and smiling. It seems like he's still in Ireland. It seems like he made it through. Um, and it seems like he is still on the run. Again, I didn't love the end. It it works, but I think it could have been so much better if they had if he had just like made Bravo take the fall. That would have been even scarier to have a serial killer still out there who, you know. Who is who has done it twice? Maybe he'll do it again, and then I don't know. They could have had something happen later where another body discovered some other ending. Something that didn't have to have this like big revelation. It felt a little bit sloppy. It felt a little bit like you know too much. But overall, again, I liked this film. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed a lot about it. So I think you should definitely check it out eventually. Check it out when it comes to streaming or on demand. And that is Damage. It comes to theaters, digital, and on demand on April twelfth, twenty twenty four. And if you do check it out, let me know what you think. Let me know what you liked and didn't like. I would love to hear it. And thanks so much for watching. If you liked this review, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you. Thank you.